Stories are the experiences which make or mar us. My name is Asadime B, and every week I will tell you a short story written by a Nigerian writer or author. That's the long and short of it. So without much ado, this week's story is by Ikenna Courage Okwara. And it is the concluding part of a three-part series. Catch up on last week's episode for part two. Here is part three of the story titled Another Love Story. In my absence and in her loneliness, Vanessa had found a sympathizer. The first couple of times his name came up in our conversation, I overlooked it, until I found out he just so happened to live at the top end of our street. Whenever I inquired about her friendship with Timmy, she would reply exasperated. Oh, don't be like that. We are just friends. Don't be jealous. Over the next couple of weeks, half of our sacred Friday hour was spent arguing about her we-are-just-friends friend. After that, I decided to avoid the friend topic, careful not to upset her. I knew that the more we argued, the closer she and her just friend got. I knew all about sympathizing and bonding. It was the oldest move of the game. As soon as it was announced at uni, and in a bid to melt some of the ice that had formed between us, I told her of my return in three weeks. It worked. She was so excited and back to her normal self. Not a single mention of her friend as we counted down the days to our reunion. I started making plans on how I would finally ask her out. What is what? Please, close your mouth and stop rolling your eyes at me. If you must know, I had tried asking her out on several occasions before I headed back to uni. She insisted we get to know each other better before becoming official. She also said she was scared of dating because it might fail and I would become mere history. My next ask, however, would be different. I had bought a double heart necklace and got our initials engraved. It was the perfect gift to mark us becoming official, a memento of our love. As fate would have it, my parents were not at home on the day I got back from uni. The driver picked me up from the airport at midday and dropped me at home. The drive from the airport was not fun. I had a myriad of emotions coursing through my being. Joy, sadness, love, anxiety, hope, fear. A myriad, I swear. I chose to focus on the love and fought to keep every other emotion at bay. Nothing was going to spoil today. Absolutely nothing. I had to wait till evening to see her and it was agony. Three rapid knocks on the door at ten past six and I instantly knew it was her. My heartbeat thumped a little louder at each knock. I flew out of the three-seater I had been lounging on and slammed into the heavy-set parlor table. But the desire to have her in my arms quelled the bolt of pain which was erupting from my big toe that I had just stubbed. I limped the rest of the way to the door and swung it open. I stood there, staring, taking in the sight of her. She was wrapped in my favourite item of clothing. A dark blue hoodie with baby blue highlights and the letters MCM written across. She wore me. The parting gift I had given her five months six weeks and four days ago. But who's counting? To hell with sympathizers. 
This was all the proof I needed. She cocked her head to the right. Her braids fell away from her cheeks, revealing the cutest dimples as her mouth flexed into a smile. Aren't you going to let me in? I pulled her into the house by the waist and slammed the door shut. She clung to me and began rubbing my head. My hands went on rampage and my lips found hers. We were thirsty. Her phone rang, interrupting our reunion. I expected her to ignore it, but instead, she apologized, reached into her pocket and brought out an iPhone with a gold case. An upgrade? What happened to her dumb phone? He is here. I heard a female voice say on the other end of the line, and Vanessa broke into a smile. I licked my lips and smiled back, feeling like a hot topic in her inner circle. She must have told all her friends about my arrival. I stood there, smirking, while waiting for her to dismiss her friend, turned to me and asked, Where were we? I was ready to jokingly respond, I forget, remind me. I swear. Sense will not kill me. But I wasn't prepared for what happened next. Vanessa excused herself, promising to make it up to me. I was confused. The sense that was not supposed to kill me started analyzing the he who was here. Am I not he? Sense told me to follow her and I should not have listened, but I did. Peeking through the fancy brick wall covering our staircase, I could see her talking to a girl and a guy by the gate. Recognizing the girl was not a problem. Everyone knew the overly chatty and flirtatious Daniela. Her mother owned the shop opposite our house. That they were friends was news to me. Recognizing the guy, however, hmm, he looked non-threatening, tallish, slimish, darkish, average-looking, with small facial hair. He was probably older than me, early to mid-twenties. He looked like an extra in a movie. That is, until he hugged the leading lady. For eight and a half seconds. What is what? Yes, I counted. So what? His hands engulfed my MCM. I watched in horror as his hands got handsier and Vanessa relaxed into his embrace. And then I saw my dimples. What on earth could he be saying that was causing her to flash my dimples at him? I made my way downstairs and walked as calmly as I could to the gate. Vanessa looked back and saw me walking towards them. I could have sworn her shoulders tensed as she moved away slightly from the guy. I noticed the guy and Vanessa had matching phone cases. I noticed a lot more than I wanted to. I clenched my jaw as I approached. Vanessa turned and gave me a sideways hug as she introduced me to the group by my name. Guys, meet Courage. I nodded a greeting, fake smiling through my teeth until she introduced the guy. Courage. This is Timmy. The we are just friends, Timmy. I felt my hands curl up into a fist and my jaw tighten. I was taking a deep breath to steady myself to speak when I heard Timmy ask Vanessa to escort him up the street. My words got stuck in my throat when I heard Vanessa say, Okay. With a brief sideways glance, she waved 
and promised to come back soon. They were about ten feet away when I heard Daniela say, Who? You mean Timmy? He's Vanessa's boyfriend now. Did she not tell you? She was responding to the question I did not realize I had asked out loud. I was now at the mercy of chatty Daniela as she started narrating how Timmy had met Vanessa three months ago at a supermarket in the neighborhood. How he had paid for her things and they exchanged numbers. I tried to zone out as Daniela recounted all the romantic gestures Timmy did to woo Vanessa. But the stupid sense that was not supposed to kill me was as heightened as ever, absorbing the details and making mental calculations. I heard the words iPhone and instinctively touched my trouser pocket, feeling for the double heart necklace with our initials. I don't remember walking away from the gate that day. I just remember lying in bed, listening to Sam Smith's Not the Only One. It suddenly had new meaning. Afterwards, my phone would not stop ringing. Vanessa kept calling and sending endless voice notes with her very smart iPhone. To think she had internet access the past couple of months. I couldn't resist the urge to listen to her voice notes. She claimed she still loved me and didn't want to lose me. Tell that to Timmy. Her last message read, I'm yours, now and forever. The irony. We stopped talking, and I kept my distance. But I could still hear her singing in the morning. Her voice now seemed to mock me. In the following months, her family would secretly pack out of the flat while still owing rent. Inflicted by different members of the same family, My father and I nursed heartbreak. Ikenna Courage Okwara is a Nigerian writer who resides in Port Harcourt. He is a civil engineering graduate of Covenant University and the CEO and co-founder of WellFed, a body-positive clothing brand launched in 2023. Ikenna believes words are the threads which connect every story. And in his spare time, he enjoys weaving those threads into different types of fabric. He is working on his first book, which is due to be published in the fall of 2023. You can read more of his work on Medium at ikenna.courage or on Wordpedia. You can also connect with Ikenna on Instagram at just.courage underscore, on Twitter at Ikenna underscore courage and on LinkedIn at Okwara Ikenna. Details and links will be in the episode description. If you've got a story you would like to be featured on this podcast or a published book you want to make into an audiobook, send an email to info at osadumebi.com or send me a message at osadumebi on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. I look forward to collaborating with you. And if you've enjoyed this week's episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and tell a friend that stories are a good escape for a few minutes each week.